Okay, hello everyone. This is Vincent Moikens from AR Lucida. I am the lead developer of the Android application. For those of you that don't know, AR Lucida is the Android version of the iOS application Camera Lucida. It's designed to help people who are beginners learn to draw, or even people who are advanced artists continue to work on their style or to help them get their proportions right. Really, depending on, uh, it doesn't matter what level you're at with your artistic ability, you can start drawing with AR Lucida. Uh, I'll start this by saying I'm not a very artistic person. Uh, I've never considered myself artistic, um, but with AR Lucida I have the tools to create some very beautiful pictures. So what you'll see here is um, the application, the main screen. You'll see that my hands probably look upside down to you, and the reasoning is because the stand I have set up it's pretty basic, it's a few books stacked on top of each other, and then my phone is resting on the top and it's been counterbalanced so it can hang over a little bit. Now the edge of my paper, I have it taped down, and I've also taped down my phone, so none of it should move even when, even when I'm interacting with the screen. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do before I even begin drawing is I am going to uh, do a couple of things. So because it's upside down, the interface looks upside down to me right now. And so I have a little feature built in that will help us with that. It also means that in the video, the screen is going to look flipped upside down, and I'll probably edit it so it rotates back around for you again. But just know that if you ever get in a situation where your interface is upside down and you want to access it easier, you can start by going up here to the menu, and you can click Flip Interface. What that's going to do is it's going to change the interface, but keep the camera the same so you don't have any of this reverse weird effect. Okay, so the next thing that I usually do when I'm about to begin is I will go and I will turn the flashlight on. Now, if your phone does not have a light, it's not going to do anything, unfortunately. You'll just have to light your area better. But for me, it really helps with the quality of the drawing area. And in a dimly lit room, it can really improve the overall experience. And then you'll notice my hands are a little fuzzy. Sometimes the camera doesn't autofocus. For that, you just go to the menu again and you click Focus Camera. It should bring everything at this level into focus, and luckily it won't change height, so the focus should stay. Okay, so now we have to decide what we're going to draw. Now, I have a folder on my phone called AR Lucida, which I've just selected for um, an image that I usually use, that I took, and therefore it isn't a copyrighted image. So, to get to that image, we have to open up the sidebar. You'll notice I'm in version 1.2.2. Now, this was a recently updated version that had some bug fixes and also included the flipping feature. Um, there are still some people reporting a couple issues with the preview, but I'm working really hard to fix that, and it should be done soon. If you have any questions at all, any suggestions, anything you want to tell me, you can use the about slash contact page, and you'll see it'll bring you to a little page where you can press email and you can send me an email. So we'll go back. And where we want to go is Gallery. So when I click Gallery, uh, because I just barely installed it, it's going to ask you to access your photos, media. Just click Allow. And it'll bring me into my photo gallery. And here, I can select the image I want. And now you notice we're back in the app. And now, using two fingers, I can pinch to zoom in on this image. And right now, we're positioning this image, which means that we're not drawing it yet, because within the drawing, usually when I would pinch and zoom, it would move the camera with me. But because I'm just positioning it, I uh, don't have that happening. So what we're going to do is, and this is also another weird bug that's going to be fixed soon, but you'll notice the slider, which controls the opacity, is at 50%, but the image is just um, completely solid. So what I'm going to do quickly is if I just touch it, it updates it. And you can use the slider while you're in this view, maybe to get things better. I think I'm going to scale the picture up like this. If you wanted to, you could hit rotate, and it would rotate the image around um, just at 90 degree intervals, but I don't need to. And when you think it's positioned correctly, you can hit draw. And now you'll notice when I pinch and zoom, it also zooms in the camera preview. And when I pan around, it also pans around both previews, which is really helpful. Okay, so the next thing we're going to go through is a few of the filters. You'll notice the camera, well, let's quickly just look at the, the slider bar. The slider will control the opacity of the image. You can go 100% to zero, whatever you need in between, and you can control it at any time. Uh, I'm going to say that that's probably pretty good for now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the plus button. And what this allows us to do is add filters. And you'll notice there's a few filters here. The top one is clear effects. 
that does basically what it says. It's going to take away any effects and revert back to the colored picture. It should keep the location and everything, but it's going to remove all the effects. Below that we have black and white. That's pretty standard. Posterizing and then black and white posterizing. Now, you can get the black and white posterizing effect by posterizing and then selecting black and white, but the black and white posterize does it for you. You have negative and then a 64 colors kind of uh, filter. There's going to be more filters added later, but uh, right now I'm focusing on just the main uh, app functionality. And so more filters will be coming, but they're going to be coming later. Okay, so let's just quickly select um, black and white, for example, so you can see. Now, if I wanted to again, I click clear effects, I can do negative, and if I do negative again, it reverts itself, that's pretty standard. So, for this drawing, I like to use black and white posterize. So when you do this, it's going to select, and it's going to ask you how many levels, and this is just, when you posterize something, it takes all the colors and converts it down to a certain amount of levels. Um, the lower the levels, the less resolution, you could say, of the image. Um, for me, I'm going to say probably five, five or six. Let's see what that looks like. If, if we want to change it, we can always revert it back. Okay, that's pretty good. So you'll see now when I zoom in, you've got these different areas of gray that are different basic levels. And this is really great for beginners because what it teaches you to do is if you can shade at different darknesses, you can basically make an entire image just with the posterizing effect. So... In this video, I'm not going to do a full drawing. It's mainly just an introduction to the application and how to use it. But I am just going to start off just so you can see what it's like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on the nose. And I'm just going to take my pencil here. And I'm just going to start coloring in this area. You can try and match the darkness a little bit. And I'm just coloring in this area. Knowing that this is kind of the the darkest areas. And I'm not using a very good pencil for this, just the first pencil I found. Um, pencils, you can use pencils, pens, it's really no limit to what you can use with the application, but at the very basic level, a pencil is nice, and if you have a, an eraser you can smudge with to get different shading or to get transitions right, uh, that's good, because if you're not very good at doing color transitions or darkness transitions, with a pencil, you can do it with a kind of a smudge eraser. Okay, so now you can see I can pan over, and we can start working on sort of a lighter section just outside of here. This is definitely not as dark as the one inside of it, but a little bit still a darkness. I might speed up part of this section just so we can get to a kind of a okay area. Here's another dark section. Now, a question I get asked a lot is what to do for stands. And there are, really it's up to how creative you want to be with the stands. If you're someone like me, um, I simply stack some books, tape it all down, and then just go ahead. Um, but some people have gotten really creative. I've seen some cool emails sent to me with some easels that have been repurposed to allow the app to, or allow to a, a camera to face an easel. Um, I've seen some people design things out of PVC. Uh, Peter over at the Camera Lucida um, app has a few great tutorials for uh, making stands for Camera Lucida, and luckily, making a stand for Camera Lucida is the same as making one for AR Lucida, because the apps work on the same principle. So if you want, you can go to uh, CameraLucidaApp.com, or you can just look up Camera Lucida app, and on his website, he has a lot of great tutorials for building stands and things, and also he has some really cool time lapses of him, so I would say definitely go check that out. Um, it's worth it. His tutorials are also good, but because the development process is uh, further behind than Camera Lucida, it's kind of hard at times because he has some features that are not yet implemented in AR Lucida, but will be in the future.
Okay, so you see now I'm zoomed in on the eye and I'm just kind of working on getting these darker areas a little bit darker to highlight kind of the lights that are coming in. Um, unfortunately, the picture I'm doing is of a white dog, so <laughs> maybe not the best picture, but um, it really does show. And again, like I mentioned before, I have I would definitely not consider myself a very artistic person, but it's basically like coloring or tracing and if you have an artistic eye or you can build up an artistic eye it really helps because then you can do some touch-ups yourself um, and you really can get some beautiful pictures again like I said if you check out Pete's website uh, for camera lucida he has some amazing time lapses he has done and I mean he's artistic and he throws them together like they're nothing so okay so if I lower the opacity you see kind of like you see how we're kind we're starting to get there um, you can definitely see the nose, the eye, I can go over here and start working on the other eye, but I'm going to be finishing up soon. Again, this is just a short video to kind of explain how uh, to use the basic functions of the app, and uh, just kind of to show how it would work. Now, if you have any questions or anything, you can contact me on my website, arlucida.com. Uh, you can find my contact information there. You can also find it on my Google Play page, and you can email me at vincent at arlucida.com. So, uh, we're just finishing up here. So, overall, you can see how it's actually, it's starting to come into it, and this, I've only spent five, six, seven minutes on this, and it's already starting to look like a picture. And if you spend more time on it, you can get some really good results. So now I'll show you the one of the final features. Uh, if you're finished with your drawing you can, and you're happy with it, you can go up here and you can click Clear Picture. It's going to clear the picture from your screen. If you wanted to add a new one, again, you could go back to Gallery. Um, and you can turn off the flashlight and return the interface to the normal orientation. But closing the app will do that automatically. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. And as mentioned before, any questions, suggestions, comments, go ahead and uh, contact me. And if you really like the app, go ahead and leave a review on my Google Play page. It really helps. Okay, thank you very much for watching.